is up, you fan levitardians. No, you didn't click the wrong link if you're wondering where you are. This is the Fan Levitard Show, the fastest growing Dan Levitard Show fan YouTube channel. We blowing up. So stick around. Check us out. But first, I gotta I gotta get my turkey going here. One second. The bird is in. And don't worry, folks. I did it nice and safe, just like Greg Cody. All right? Just frying it up right there. Nice little Thanksgiving bird. And we've got ourselves a nice little Thanksgiving episode of the Fan Levitard Show. A little Levitard Show thanks. Right? Thinking about what I'm thankful for in terms of the Levitard Show this year. But first, I just want to talk briefly a little bit about today's show. What a great show it was today to send us off into the Thanksgiving weekend. First off, it was a visual treat. So many gags going on. Dan dressed as fried Flintstones, Stu Gotts. One hour is Kirk Cousins with a bunch of bushes surrounding him, drawn on abs. All the while in the background, a delightful Thanksgiving picture with Dan and Stu blown up to look like... um, Thanksgiving floats very funny great visual gags and just a great show all around funny discussion about Roy's show what is it is it after the game before the game on Fridays when is it I don't know but it had bougie grass on it from the driving range I like that the show continues to do new things like that so uh, I've been enjoying Roy's show and then of course the growing chorus of what I was going to say, like Joe Zagaki's, but it's not Joe Zagaki's. I'm, I'm blanking. Joe Zagaki is what, why can't I think of the character? Oh, it is Zagaki's. I second guess myself. The growing chorus of Joe Zagaki's. Once again, Mike Ryan doing a bit, sweeping up Levitard show fans love it it's hilarious every time they do it love when they get the back and forth and today's show was just a fantastic show that's got me thinking about what am I thankful for for the Dan Levitard show and this is something I've actually been thinking about and probably want to talk about even more because if you follow us on the socials you know dropped our first sub stack today that's right i wrote about the pablo torre finds out show doing a little writing on my thanksgiving break here so have a little bit of extra free time wrote a little something about why i think the ptfo share and tell is so good and why it's become honestly my favorite thing for the show so you can check that out uh sub stack nathan minima sorry I don't, I'm not going to write all that often because I already do a lot around this and writing regularly would be a lot, but it was fun to dust off some writing and put something together. And I do want to at least write something once again up in the near future about the Levitard show um, among the veins of just what I love and enjoy about it. Um, so similar to this, I'm thankful for this show and What am I thankful for for the Levitard show this year? First off, you got to start with the head honcho, Dan Levitard. I think uh, as fans come to a greater appreciation to appreciate what Dan does, given how difficult and challenging things have been for him recently, that he's still shown up and done his best for the show. And I think, um, honestly... As a fan, it's it's produced some very engaging content, getting to know Dan more and him opening up about his life. So I just appreciate Dan Levitard and everything he does, what he stands for, how he how he conducts himself. And, you know, I, I wish him the best as he continues to grieve um, the loss of his brother. And, you know, we care about you, Dan. Take care of yourself. 
you can you can still take some more time off but we appreciate the ways that you've continued to carry this show and do what you do amidst trying time so thankful for you dan number two gotta say next thing i am thankful for it's got to be one of the newest additions lucy she's got a really high q rating um and really love how it's this regular thing now weekly she goes to a big college football game and gets really good content like watching those videos is a treat rose i think they said puts them together i don't I'm trying to trying to figure out who Rose is because anytime someone's new mentioned, you know, you know how nasty Nate be, folks. I gotta find out who that is and try to connect with them and talk with them because Rose really does a great job putting those um, videos together. And honestly, I think the show could do a whole lot more with the Lucy content. There's got to be just hours of it that could be turned into shorts, could be turned into its own channel. You know, a longer video other clips that are just her conversations with one specific person. I'm sure there's a lot left on the cutting room floor that could still be used as content. Um, but what they do get out of it, one really incredibly well-produced, fun, entertaining, funny, um, gorgeously shot shout out to Taylor. I'm guessing he has some of that as he's usually there with her. Um, just really well done, really fun. I enjoy it a lot, and Lucy has been, once again, another great addition to the Lebetard show. Thanks, Mike Ryan. Of course, he's he's the he's the man who finds these people that brings us to the brings them to the Lebetard show fans, so we can get to know them, appreciate them. And Lucy, love her attitude, love how she's kind of this fresh face who loves sports who cries at these events that she goes to um so been really enjoying her on the show like much of lebitard nation um lastly of course you know i I'm, i was gonna say I'm, I'm grateful for mike ryan but maybe uh if we do an end of year thing say something for mike always always grateful for Mike Ryan and what he brings. Cause what I'm going to say is yes, grateful for Mike Ryan, but here's how, here's how I'll swing it in a way that's more than just Mike Ryan. What Mike Ryan to me represents is new things, fresh things. Mike's always constantly changing, evolving, doing new things. That's why he's my favorite person on the show. So in that vein, what I'm grateful for, for the Levitard show is just all the new things they're doing. Pablo Torre finds out. I, I consider that like that does not exist without what they've done with Meadowlark leaving ESPN uh, oddball the changes to South Beach sessions this year South Beach sessions has been really good uh, I know the Marcellus Wiley um, interview was long but if you listen to that when you got to the end of that interview uh, when Dan and him started talking about loss, like that was an incredible like 15 minutes of just two guys being honest and vulnerable and genuine, which is what's really made South Beach Sessions much improved. Um, not that it wasn't, you know, bad before, but it's been really great this year. So South Beach Sessions, Pablo Torre finds out, which I've talked about written about of course which i've already told you to check out um honestly i'm pablo dory finds out is just so good every week they do something that just is a very rewarding listen oddball continues to get better and better uh i love the new things they're trying with life coaches charlotte going to that psychic was great uh they debuted a segment of explaining the NBA to old people um and I really I really enjoy all the new things that the Levitard show does for me that's the biggest thing that I came to like about the Levitard show is when I heard it it was something that was new it was different than other sports talk shows and that's why I came to like it 
and listen to it so much now. And I'm thankful that they're continuing to be a show. Like they're not just still doing the same thing. They're creating new things. They're challenging themselves. They're trying new things. And anytime they do stuff like that, I get on board and support it and check it out. And you should too. And and that's what I'm grateful for. Oh, wait. I do have one last thing I'm grateful for, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the Sesta Cyclones. Roll that God bless Highline music. God bless Highline. That's right, folks. We're smashing together two episodes here. The end of our Leba Thanks rolling it into a little godless highlight it's been a little bit since we've talked a little uh fronton action out there your cesta cyclones currently sit in second place seven points behind the rebote renegades ud's rebote renegades uh we don't play there are there there are there are last game of this season so we've really got to show out if we want to catch them they got a big matchup Black Friday matchup against Jorge Masvidal's Dejada Devils, which we got to boat race them if we want to have a chance at catching the Robote Renegades and getting that first place by. Otherwise, people are wondering for that free event that they just announced. December 11th is also the day of the semifinals. So now, obviously, that would happen a little bit before, but that would still be pretty tight with semifinals and all that but first place is what we're aiming for here fellas got to get that guaranteed spot in the championship but i mentioned i'm thankful this team and i am they this team has really been a lot of fun and if you told me back when i started god bless highlight as a bit to riff off of god bless football that honestly what would provide me some of the most sports enjoyment from a team would be highlight i'd be like no way but honestly that's what it's come to be with this year's team they're just a lot of fun you watch the games and over these years like i've gotten to know the players i've talked to like most of them and you just see the the camaraderie on this year's team it's a really fun team if you haven't watched the sesta cyclones play you really should. There's not much left. Get on the bandwagon. Get behind this team because chances are we won't be able to put this team back together again next year because that's just how it works. Things change from year to year. And we were able to put such a good team together because we were last place. And we're not that, which is why also what's coming up matters because you look at the team like the wall warriors huge drop off they're probably going to finish as the worst team in a battle court with the lowest amount of points scored in a season they're just really bad and that was because of where they were positioned in the draft they were i think they ended the year third place um Losing to the Wall Warriors in the, not the Wall Warriors, sorry, the Wall Warriors lost to the Tula Chargers in the semifinals last year. So when that's like the worst place you want to be because you're middle of the pack. I was going to go back and watch the draft again and see just how they came to this place. Maybe they did just make some bad picks, but either way, we got to push for first because if, if you're in that third place, that's not a great place to be because you get less freezes um the bad teams get to pick before you so you lose out on a lot of players that way we really want to shoot to win the league so we can get last year i think the winning team got four freezes i'm hoping that stays the same it does look like they change that every year with the draft though um so you never know but this team is a lot of fun and I'm I'm super stoked for following them. And you know what? I've actually got one last thing here for you folks. It's Nathan's Tears. You know my muse, Tony, who I get Nathan's top high from that I do every once in a while. 
once a season, it looks like. But Tony did a tears, and so you know what? I'm going to do Nathan's highlight tears. There's five teams in battle court, and I've got let – me, let me count my tears here. How many tears do I have here? That's the wrong paper. Exciting stuff for you, folks. Um, and for this here, I should probably shift over to my God bless high lie background for you. Yeah, there it is. Huh? Now we can get to Nathan's top tiers. We got five teams and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiers for five teams. All right. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Tier number one, cream of the crop. There's only one team in this tier, and that's the Robote Renegades. It's I'd, I'd love to put the Sesta Cyclones in there, but you can't argue with what the Robote Renegades have done this season. They have looked like the cream of the crop, the best team that's out there. Go Cherry is... <clears throat> He's honestly the best player that's out there. Really tough to beat that guy. Arats, Goanaga, uh, they get Williams is coming back, so no more sub with El Barba. Uh, what, I think Ben? Ben on there, team two. And then I'm blinking. Go Cherry, Arats, Goanaga. I know there's another one. Like, they're loaded. They're stacked. And it's kick. I'm, I'm kicking myself that I can't name them all because I usually can. But they've been really good. They got fat off of playing the Wall Warriors three times in a row, and they get to play them one more time. A depleted Wall Warriors squad that's essentially given up on the season. They're already angling for that number one draft pick because they know what that can do for a team in battle court. So... Tier one, tier two, top of the mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one team here that's top of the mountain. That's your Sesta Cyclones, all right? And yes, I know there's cream of the crop, but just like Tony's top of the mountain Sesta Cyclones, this team's really good, all right? You have Bueno, Ikeda, Jedin. That's our bottom third. Those guys have been solid. Jedin has really stepped up as the six this year on our team. Carbio is having a great season. He looks like the Carbio of seasons one and two. Um, Manu and Manny, you know, they've had their ups and downs this season, but they're still super solid and really carry and give great support when they're on a doubles team. And again, like I said, this team's really fun. Top of the mountain, which brings me to my next tier, Best Vibes. That's also Clone Cartel, ladies and gentlemen. This team, the vibes on this team, it's a lot of fun. You got to get in on this team. Their TikTok, all this stuff, watching them play. When they go to the ESPN3 players pit, there's a different vibe when the Sesta Cyclones are playing. This is a united team that's playing. But you guys got to get in on them. All right? I can't stress that enough. The vibes for Clone Cartel, fun. F-U-N. And F-U if you don't get in on it, all right? Next tier, above the rest. That's also your Sesta Cyclones. You got the Robote Renegades, and it's the Sesta Cyclones. We're above everybody else, far and above. Now, anything can happen in those playoffs, but we've shown this year we're clearly above everybody else, except those Robote Renegades, which we did boat race when we played them last time. So hopefully we're gonna have to do that again to get to that cream of the crop level and move on up. Next tier, it's the don't count them out tier. That's the day hot of devils. You never know. This team showed some pluck in their first season, but ultimately faded. They've once again been strong this season, although they have not looked as good as of late, but don't count them out because ladies and gentlemen, Last year, who came out of nowhere to win the championship? That was the Miami Lifestyle, or Lifestyle Miami Chargers. I think I called them the Trula Chargers earlier at some point. But team can get hot. These Devils, they've shown that they can get hot and get wins, you know, 
They have a talented team, but they're still a little bit below us, ladies and gentlemen. And we gotta, we gotta bow race them again. Can't stress it enough. Bow race. They can. We can only surrender like one match, max. Really would love to take all the points like we did last time we played them and just sweep the floor with them. Next year, this is the count them out tier. It's the Lifestyle Miami Chargers. It's over for them. They've got the least points remaining. They're a couple points behind the Dejada Devils who have another game day advantage ahead of them. They're dead in the water and they just don't know it yet. They they can maybe catch the Dejada Devils if the Devils just really tank at the end of the season, which they could do. But honestly, I don't see it happening. This is a team that they've had several opportunities to make a move, and they have not. They need convincing wins. Like, if they don't get convincing game day wins of five or more points, honestly, they need six points for the time they're going out. They're just dead, and I don't see that happening. You can count them out. Last year, this is the bottom of the barrel. It's your wall warriors, folks. Bottom of the barrel. Yes, they've been saddled with injuries on the team that Bradley being out has hurt him, but really bottom of the barrel stuff. Been watching some of their games against the Robote Renegades to see, like, can they put up a fight? They didn't put any fight at all until the last one that they played. And even then, they didn't get, I think they got two and a half points was the most they could muster. They got swept in one, took one match in the other, and two and a half in the third match. So a combined, like, honestly, I think they only got three points total in playing all that. So they showed a little fight against the Chula Chargers, but that just goes to show you if the Chula Chargers can't wipe the floor with them, you got to count them out because that's a bottom of the barrel team. I... I don't know the stats off my head, but the Juice Correa team, the negative points, like they just get 6-1, 6-2. They get schooled so easily. And that has been Nathan's tears. And this has been God Bless Highlight. Thanks for listening, folks. Hey, you know what? Uh, where do you listen to the Fan Levitard Show? Do you listen to it on Spotify? Do you listen to it on Apple Podcasts? Do me a favor. Head on over to Spotify. Going to have a question there. What are you thankful for for the Levitard Show? Why don't you answer that and let's find out what some of you other fans are thankful for when it comes to the Levitard Show. Thank you for listening to this one. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. Enjoy those Black Friday deals and we'll see you next week. Peace out.